David with DFW Gun Cleaning. Welcome back. For those of you that have followed the channel for a while, you know I am a fan of bullpups. Had the uh, Keltec RDB Survival and the RDB, both of which are fantastic rifles. Uh, very accurate, in my experience, 100% reliable. Very smooth shooting. They, you know, the RDB runs very well suppressed. I can't say enough great things about them, uh, but there's one thing. It's a civilian grade firearm. The Zytel composite material is fairly fragile. You'll see that my RDB has a chunk missing out of the butt plate from where I dropped it like a foot off the ground. It is what it is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a civilian grade firearm. Uh, but today I have something a little bit different. Uh, a few months ago, it's actually been about six months now, picked up the Springfield Hellion or the Croatian VHS-2 uh, service rifle. This one is chambered in 5.56223, feeds from a uh, 25 round PMAG YouTube, you can see, it's conveniently labeled right there for you, 25 rounds. I mean, I, I don't even know what I would do if I had a 30 round in this thing, it might explode, I'm not really sure. Uh, very dangerous though, for sure. Uh, the thing feeds from standard AR pattern, uh, detachable magazines, so one thing that, uh, I haven't seen a lot of people address is the length of pull. The length of pull on this thing is already very long. Uh, it feels like 14, 15 inches, like getting into shotgun territory, really. Um, and beyond that, it is expandable. Uh, so you can bring that sucker out like at least another two inches. Uh, I mean, it feels like my arm is almost fully extended. I know a lot of people like expandable butt socks for use with body armor, generally because, you know, you can keep them on the shorter side. Uh, when you have body armor on, like, you can bring the gun a little closer to you. Uh, with this one, I mean, I guess if your Sasquatch got you covered. Um, other than that, like, I don't really see myself ever extending this thing out. It's already an inch and a half or so longer than what I would prefer. Uh, usually with 223 556 rifles, I'm accustomed to something like 13 inches or less in terms of length of pull. Uh, this is already beyond that, and I mean, it's very comfortable. It does point very naturally, especially when you're standing kind of offhand. It does feel very natural. Um, you know, it balances well, and it's easy to connect with plates standing at 100 yards, um, which is a lot of fun. I do like that, uh, but I would still prefer something an inch and a half shorter or so in, on the length of pull. Uh, outside of that, this thing has been very fun to shoot, very accurate. Uh, been able to print like two inch groups with just some cheap wolf steel case uh, using the 3X optic from Primary Arms. We're not really going to be going into the history of the VHS-2, but if you want an in-depth dive on the VHS-2, as well as a broad range of subjects, I suggest you check out Michiko. He has an excellent in-depth look at the VHS-2 where he explores its service life and history. Uh, just a really good video, great source of information. So if you haven't checked that out, do so. Uh, getting back to the rifle, this one is set up for right-hand ejection. We do have a small detent that holds the ejection port cover there. It is reversible for left-hand ejection. Uh, so not truly ambidextrous there, but it can be configured either way. We do have a fully ambidextrous safety selector here on the uh, receiver. Uh, my preferred grip for AR-15 is the Bravo B5. Uh, I believe it's the B5 grip. Uh, it's a little bit more vertical. However, when I mounted it to this gun, I was not able to reach the safety selector with my thumb, which is not a good situation. I had to like reconfigure my grip to reach around there so I've left it uh, with this the grip that came with it not really sure what model that is it looks familiar but uh, it really feels pretty decent uh, moving forward we have the full length Picatinny rail on top of the gun we have our gas adjustment right here I believe it's just two positions for suppressed and normal uh, we do have our ambidextrous charging handle non-reciprocating can come out on either side there it looks a little bit cramped but in practice it's really easy to get your finger in there and around very easy to charge the rifle uh, so 
we will uh, take a look inside. We're going to go out. Uh, I've got a little bit of range footage from before I put the optic on. Apologies. I've had a lot of priorities. Uh, this channel is 100% self-funded. And uh, all of this is my money, my time. I don't ask you to buy anything. I don't ask you to donate any money. Uh, really, just ask you to like, share, and subscribe if you do like the content. Uh, it kind of motivates me to help share my experiences with you guys. Got a bunch more new toys uh, coming up on the channel, and I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. Uh, so anyways, we'll take a look at some of that range footage, and then we'll go in a little bit closer into the Hellion. in close with the uh, VHS-2 or the Hellion, tastefully stamped into the, uh, molded into the plastic there. Could do without the uh, naming from Springfield. The uh, butt pad, got a nice bit of texture back here. Sorry, the lighting's not really showing that. There we go. Here's our expandable butt plate. You can see we have multiple locking recesses in there for different length of pull. Here's our bolt release. Magazine release. This goes forward. It is a kind of a paddle actuated. Or hinged on the uh, left hand side rather. And it just kind of pushes forward. Drop out our standard M3P mag. What comes with the gun. Right here is our cheek piece up on top. Keep your chin right here on either side. And uh, you're actually, the uh, case has kind of come straight back, but you can see here where the steel's been chewing it up. They pop off of that thing and go f directly forward. So you can actually shoot this from either side. We have a hinge dust cover there. Looking at our bolt, just uses a little detent right here. Very similar to the uh, dust cover on an M16 AR. Our uh, rear backup side, this is kind of a diopter aperture. In case you didn't see, we can press right there. Press on that, sorry. It's going to flip our side up. Mine's not going to clear all the way because of the uh, Primary Arms 3X Micro Prism I have on here. Fantastic sight, by the way. Moving forward, we got the uh, Cross Cannons Flaming Bomb Springfield logo commercial nonsense. Uh, but, you know, Cross Cannons or the Flaming Bomb were both hallmarks of U.S. military ordnance. Here we have our 
picked any rail along the upper. Got a two position safety selector, fire and safe, that is ambidextrous as you'll see on the other side. Here is our AR grip interface. Uh, for whatever reason, it is down, giving you like a more vertical grip. I wish they would have just left this like a regular AR-15 interchange so that I could use my preferred grip. Um, I like the Bravo B5s and I tried to put it on here with the Bravo B5 because of the downward angle. I mean, it really puts it vertical. And then with the uh, ridge back here on the back, it puts it to where my thumb can't reach the safety. I'll show you on the other side. I have pretty large hands and when I can't reach the safety, um, it's long. Here is our ambidextrous charging handle. These are our captive takedown pins right here. Here. Here is a sling swivel on both sides. Front sight, once again, we got the nice press engraving there just in case. It's also marked for uh, your elevation adjustments. It's a nice thick post right in the center of that circle. Um, I think I already stated this, for my purposes, it pretty much covers a six or nine inch plate at 100 yards. So, you know, not precise enough for what I like. Here's our muzzle device flash hider. We have a two position gas adjustment here. Let's see if I can get those markings to show up. I'm not sure if you can see that. We have N, I su I'm supposing that's normal. I'm going to assume that's normal. And then we also have uh, S, which would be for suppressed use. My assumption, once again. So let's go over to the uh, front side. Here we have more swivel or uh, QD attachment points. You'll saw them on the other side of the gun. I didn't call them out. But we also have the uh, clip on style. And an extra charging hands on once again, holds to either side. It is non-reciprocating, just kind of hangs out there when not in use. That grip, uh, I think this is maybe the BCM gunfighter grip. It does have a little hinge storage compartment with a nice rubber gasket on the bottom. And an extra safety once again. Our serial number, once again, it has to be on steel. Uh, it cannot be, or it has to be on part of the frame, you know, uh, it cannot be on the plastic. So here we have the uh, recess through the plastic. Here's uh, uh, the left side ejection port. This one does require a little bit of uh, work to convert it over. So not truly ambidextrous, well, not instantly ambidextrous, but it is adjustable or convertible for left hand ejection. And once again, even if you are shooting this thing left handed, which I have done, uh, with the gun set up for right hand ejection, it is just fine. It does not hit you in the face, even though that brass does come out with quite some authority, that deflector does a really good job of sending it forward. Once again, here's our mag release, ambidextrous. Bolt release, take down pins. Rear sight. And there's our butt plate. Let's take a look inside. Here we are, field strip into our major components. It's our butt stock assembly. Everything ends right there at the back of my finger. So whenever I mention wasted space, you got two inches to play with or an inch and a half. Uh, they could have shortened this up significantly by going with just a fixed butt plate and giving you kind of a better length of pull, in my opinion, much closer to 13 inches or so, is what it is. Uh, it still works very well. You can see our hook up there that this slides into. I'll show you that recess here in a little bit. Here's our recoil spring, guide rods, and we have like a polyurethane buffer right back there. Here's our adjustment mechanism for the stock. And you can see, once again, all these little locking recesses for your Jarius adjustment points if you need it longer than it is. Here's our magwell. This is our uh, NATO spec, if you will. 
ambidextrous mag release. You can see how this works right here. The interface with the magazine just hinges right there. We have a pen in the corner and you can actually see looking from the top that this thing just hinges right there to actuate our release. Works very well. You can see from the inside. Just our front handguard assembly. I imagine that they probably will, uh, you'll see some aftermarket support for these very soon. Just a very simple solution. Locks in on tabs up here at the front. One pin back here at the back that is captive. And then we have a couple of QD recesses up here. Um, I would imagine we'll see some aluminum offerings. Some um, I don't know if anyone wants quad rail these days, uh, but probably something a little bit more sturdy than the plastic for some folks. Plastic works out for me. Once again, just our included standard magazine. And here is our bolt assembly. Very fancy. You can see all the uh, mechanisms down in there. Very similar to an AR-15 M16 bolt from the front. And then we have our long gas piston up here. Just our piston face. So I'm not gonna take it down any further than this, but you can take that down for full cleaning. Sorry, it's dirty. As I mentioned, already got a few hundred rounds through the gun and uh, I'm not taking the time to wipe it down quite yet. Here is our stripped assembly. You can see that uh, suppressed marking on our selector there. You just depress that down and roll it. There's only two positions, so you have the uh, suppressed and normal, or S and N. I've been running it on N because that's how it came from the factory. Here you can see our mechanism for our charging handle. Here's our captive takedown pins. Here's our next takedown pin and the rear takedown pin. I believe you can separate the lower assembly here from the upper. Probably something to do with this button. I don't want to take any uh, take that rail off or anything, so I'm going to leave it at this. Plenty of access in here for cleaning. Sorry for the uh, filth. But you can see our locking recess. Let's see if we can focus this, sorry. There we go. You can see our chamber, and above that, our gas piston channel. Quote me on this, but I believe that the uh, Croatians designed this to work with G36 mags. So it's nice that, uh, in theory, I suppose, you could get a different mag well and run this with G36 mags. Uh, there may be other variants available. It'd be really cool to see this thing in like a 762 by 39 offering. Once again, there's our ambidextrous bolt release. You can see back in here, just our room for our bolt assembly. And then here we have our hammer. And this just pops out of the uh, back of the gun, sits right in here. And that, this rear takedown pin here goes right through here. This little locking block holds it in place, comes right through that recess. If you have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. I would love to show you the uh, takedown and disassembly, but that's not for YouTube. So as you can see, the uh, Hellion is a very robust rifle. I've only got about 400 rounds through it, but so far it has been 100% accurate in my experience and with my sample size of one. Uh, but I wanted to bring out the RDB and just to give it a, a quick side-by-side -side for you guys so you can kind of see the scale of things and what's going on here. Uh, but as you can see, the grip position is about two inches further back on the RDB leading to a length of pull much more akin to uh, 12 and a half, 13 inches as opposed to what you're getting with the VHS-2. Uh, don't worry, 
20 round mag, 25 round mag, completely safe. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and test the trigger pulls. I've mentioned it before on the channel. The kel have fantastic triggers. I've always heard bad things about bullpup triggers, but in my experience with the kel RDB, the trigger was fantastic, right around four pounds with the RDB-S. It's like two and a half, three pounds, uh, even better. Very, very stable triggers though. These are not hair triggers. These are very serviceable. You know, a very nice take up, nice defined wall and a clean break. The trigger on the VHS-2, however, is a military trigger, uh, you know, for better or worse. That is the situation. And as you'll see, we'll go ahead and flip that to fire. Clear it one more time. Uh, there is quite a bit of take up. It's kind of mushy, spongy, and then you do hit a defined wall, and then you have to continue to pull through that wall, and you just get a, just a, like mush and then break. The reset. Very well defined, tactile, audible, and pretty much right there at that wall. So like right when you're hitting that defined wall, but then you have that just mushy, spongy, creepy. It's not that heavy. It's a very serviceable trigger, very manageable, but not what I would call a max trigger by any means. We'll go ahead and hit it with the Wheeler trigger pull gauge. <clears throat> Five pounds, six ounces. Five pounds, nine ounces. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Give them one more. Five pounds, six ounces. So we're right in the five to five and a half pound range. Once again, not heavy, uh, very serviceable. You just hit that wall and then I would prefer it just break here, but you get this nice creepy take up and then just, it does break. In comparison, we have the uh, kel RDB. We have a, a very nice, just, short take up and then a nice defined wall and break like this thing you hit that wall and when you pull that wall and it goes through it just you know where it's breaking the uh, reset on this one it is vaguely audible not very tactile at all you don't really feel it you have that nice take up clean wall crisp break Yeah, that reset, not really even usable. You're going to be letting that trigger pretty much all the way out. Man, that is just a nice trigger. Get a couple of readings just for comparison's sake. Five pounds, seven ounces. One pound, 14 ounces. Well, I think that might have been me. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Three pounds, six ounces. Three pounds, 11 ounces. And just one more, because those first two, two pounds, eight ounces. So this thing is three and a half, four pounds uh, the majority of the time. Evidently not as consistent as the VHS-2 trigger, uh, but in my experience, much more manageable. Definitely prefer the RDB trigger. Uh, that being said, the polymer on the VHS-2 is just much stouter. The firearm feels much more robust. If I was going to have to use one of these to pry something apart, Definitely this one. Uh, the RDB just feels fragile, as I mentioned. 
I dropped this thing from like 12, 18 inches and it just hit right here and snapped a big chunk out of the butt plate. No big deal. Uh, still completely serviceable. Once again, civilian grade firearm versus military grade firearm. I have not had an opportunity to uh, test one of the Galil's long term. Uh, or not the Galil, the Tavor's long term. I have handled the Tavor 7 and the X95. Definitely like both of those guns. Nothing in my experience of uh, limited experience of shooting either one of those guns though made me want to pick one up. The Hellion on the other hand is very FAMAS like uh, in its appearance. I just like the uh, the old carry handle look. Whatever it is, I like it. Uh, anyways, it is a military grade firearm. Very robust. Very limited experience with it so far, but please do stick with the channel. I will have some updates on this one in the future, as well as some videos coming out. I uh, yeah, did pick up a Galil Ace, a couple of other new toys. So stick with the channel, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you soon.